Golden slumbers fill your eyes. Smiles awake when you rise. Pretty, isn't it? They made us memorize it at school. At the time, Mummy was far more interested in love poems. Poets ought to write some more sleep poems, don't you think? I see you, you've done it. it. You're coming with me. Right. No more, Mr. Nice Guy.
bloody revolvers. I've got a sunshine somewhere, haven't I? Well, if it isn't Sally Boyle. Himself is upstairs tinkering. When will he be? It's been weeks now. It's a device you left behind. Apparently, it's quite clever and complex. I just came to buy some chemicals. Over my cold, dead body. Fiona. It's not just borrowing my man while you were here. I could have got over that. It's the ambitions you put into him. Fiona, I'm sorry. He wants to be more than a village chemist. How's that, I says? Will you go to London to study to be a doctor? Will you take over Hayworth Labs? She still wouldn't take you back, I says. But you sold him the stars. And now he can't barely see where he's going. Maybe he liked me because I thought he could be more. Do you ever think of that? Get out of here. Get out, you witch. And don't let the door hit you in the arse on the way out. Well, she's mellowed. Fiona said Stuart's been working on my old pituitary extractor. Maybe... Maybe I can get it back from him later, when she's not in the shop. Wait. Harry Cavendish. He still works for the labs, doesn't he? And he owes me a favour. I'll drop by his house. Dear Uncle Jack, a few days ago, I saw a bunch of citizens chasing someone down Milk Street. Sort of ironic I became a chemist, considering what Mum did, if you think about it. Do you know who he was, and did we kill him? Uh, do you know why we were chasing him? Well, <laughs> dear Janet.
I wish I weren't such rubbish at tinkering. On the roof across from my bedroom, I've noticed an awful lot of chickens. They just fly up there and watch me through my open window. The peculiar thing is, they're all black with sharp black beaks. And all they do all day is go caw, caw, caw. Why are there chickens on my neighbor's roof? I've never noticed them there before. Dear Miss Dix, I think it's likely that those are not chickens at all. So they must be mine. I'd like to know what they're for. All I remember during the war was Those peepers weren't there before. Why are they trying to keep people out? So how could I even want? Sally Boyle. Just a moment. Just a moment, damn it. I can't get to the door as fast as I used to. Sally Boyle. Well, I haven't seen you in a dog's age. What? What happened to your eyes? Oh, this little thing. A doctor used miscalculated the brominating reaction and it blew up in my face. Then he convinced Dr. Verloc it was my fault. So I got the sack. That weasel. Oh, you don't have to pretend you're interested in the tedious old lab. How's the glamorous life of an experimental chemist? It's a bit blocked at the moment. Can't get mercury amalgam. Did you know they vent gallons of it onto rat home? Oh, well, you wouldn't. You've moved on to greener pastures. I'm sorry. I thought Anton knew what he was doing. Oh, I don't blame you for leaving us all behind. When love fades, you have to move on. Well, I'm sure you'll figure out where to find some amalgam. Maybe I will. But someone's got to prove it was Dr. Hughes's fault you lost your eyes. You know, you're right. He could hurt someone else. Is there... any evidence that it was his fault? You know, now that you mention it, his lab notes... He keeps them in his doctor bag. I bet they're all the evidence I need. Oh, you know what? I bet they'd also tell me how to extract the amalgam you need out of the stuff the lab is piping onto Rat Home. I'll get you his lab notes. Here's where he lives. Come back, and I'll tell you where to find the pump outlet. Don't go anywhere. Wouldn't dream of it. Well, that was tedious. Do you know again tomorrow for more cheery answers to your questions about your life in Wellington Wells?
Oh, it's been too long. You know, I think we wear the same size. Well... You can't say Dr. Hughes doesn't have a keen sense of style. I'd better be particularly careful like now. You anymore. If he knows I'm there, it will get nasty fast. Either I've got the bloody weight of the world on my shoulders, or I need to drop a few things I'm carrying. I feel like a mule carrying all this. And just about as fast, too.
can't Oh, look, you've been beaten by a girl. to give up some possessions or I'm not going to win a race with a garden snail. This must be the bag Harry wanted. something in case I need to run. like a mule carrying all this and just about as fast too Quite a sturdy bag. I wonder if Gwen would fit in here. She'd need to be able to breathe. Some source of oxygen and soundproofing in case she starts crying. I bet Lionel could make something like that. So glad Foggy Jack doesn't live down there.
Harry? It's Sally. Uh, Sally Boyle. Just a moment. Just a moment, damn it. I can't get to the door as fast as I used to. Did you get Dr. Hughes's bag? I've got it. Aren't you brillo? Well, here's the formula you'll need. You can get to Ratholm via the maintenance tunnels. There's a code at the door. It's 1649. I really am sorry about the accident. I thought Anton had a handle on things. Well, now we know. Cheerio! That was nasty. I'll need a few things before I go. I can get there from any hatch, now that I've got the code. Mind the gap, please. Out of the smelly darkness into... Well, not that much better. <laughs> 